Well, this has been the close to a crazy week. We've had banks going under. They started off in the U.S. and it's been spreading to Europe. We've had the government stepping in, trying to save the markets. We have lots of speculation of what's going to be happening with interest rates in the future of the economy. There's been a lot going on. But amongst all of this, there's been a storyline that's been a little bit forgotten. There's another battle brewing. And this is a battle between two juggernauts, Google and Microsoft. Google, for a long period of time, for as long as I remember, Google has been known and advertised and talked about as the AI company. That was their thing, their shtick. They were the artificial intelligence juggernaut. They've been doing that with photography. They've been doing it with their search. They've been known as the AI company for a long period of time because that's what they talk about on their earnings calls. When they talk about cloud, they say that Microsoft is good at integration. AWS is very fully fledged but Google were the AI company. Then all of a sudden the narrative started to change when Microsoft released ChatGPT. ChatGPT was a demonstration of artificial intelligence like I've never seen before. This was one of the most insane uses of artificial intelligence that I think anyone's seen. It spread across all of Silicon Valley, all of Twitter, all the tech blogs, all the financial blogs, going from accounting to law to programming to storytelling to anything. ChatGPT is incredible, and the responses it gives are amazing. This created an enormous amount of buzz around AI centered on Microsoft. They were all of a sudden the one coming out with an incredible AI product that they're integrating into Bing. Microsoft openly threatened Google saying that they're coming after their search market share. They have a real life integration of artificial intelligence into the search engine that gives a search result off to the right that's text written direct response rather than just search results listed like in Google. Not only that, but Microsoft also created Bing AI where you could talk directly to the bot in chat form. This is another iterative step forward. Microsoft pushing the limits and putting pressure on Google. Even Sasha Nadella himself said in an interview that his goal overall here was to put a little pressure on Google to make them dance. Uh, but look, at the end of the day, let's not, you know, we, they're the 800 pound gorilla on this, which is uh, what they are. And I hope that with our innovation, um, they will definitely want to come out and show that they can dance. And I want people to know that we made them dance. And I think that'll be a great day. And you have to give him credit, it seems like he was accomplishing his goal. At the time, there were reports that Google was concerned about this. They were dancing. The Google CEO issues a rallying cry in an internal memo, all hands on deck to test ChatGPT competitor Bard. Google felt pressured into responding to Microsoft. Now they're on the defense. They have boring old Microsoft that was never the AI company, all of a sudden coming out with multiple AI products that are incredibly impressive and integrating them quickly into their services. Google in the meantime really hasn't made these big iterative steps. They've just been sitting back and collecting checks from their search engine. It's been all systems ago so far, but now that Microsoft is forcing all of these changes, making their search engine better, Google feels pressured to react and Google does. After a number of internal meetings and feeling a lot of pressure from Microsoft, Google decided to have a quick reaction. They got together and they started to demo different AI things that they are working on. And this is where there were some blunders and I think some mistakes on Google's part. Because they were under pressure, because they weren't working with their own timeline and instead they were working with Microsoft's timeline, they're pressured into doing demos that weren't, they weren't ready. Like this one, it just didn't go well. Listen to what happened during this demo. We go to the live demo here. We and again, this is it. in Paris. This is <laughs> Google's big phone. response. <laughs> we will have to. She doesn't have the phone. We have no, okay. We're... So the whole thing that they're going to demo live, they had a skip. And this is a bit embarrassing for a company like Google to have these type of mistakes during a demo. Now, it's forgivable, this type of stuff happens. Anybody that works in development knows that you never try to demo things live because it always breaks. But regardless, if you're being pressured into responding to a company like Microsoft and demoing the new technology, you wanna make sure that demo is refined, that things are gonna go smoothly. On top of that blunder, Google on the same day released an advertisement on Twitter that gave an incorrect answer from Bard. So it was a double whammy. They had two things go poorly in the same day. This whole fiasco was internally criticized by many 
many employees at Google of being a rushed and unprepared response to Microsoft. And that's what's great about capitalism. As powerful as Google is, as monopolistic of a company this is, Sasha Nadella did get them to dance. He did get them to operate under pressure and under his timeline. That's what he brought to the table. Now, of course, Google didn't give up there. They decided to take a breather, collect themselves a little bit, and have another more refined response to this AI battle. This time, though, instead of Google going for the search engine, where they don't have much market share to gain, Google decided to go for Microsoft's business, the office business. In Google's words, they call it workspace. And this demo here is how they're integrating their AI expertise into their workspace. Now this response is a much better one. Google's no longer on the defense. They're no longer fumbling presentations trying to talk about their search business. Now they're on the offense. Now I have to just say so far in the midst of this tit for tat battle between these two Goliaths, I think it's amazing. I'm very impressed by this stuff and it's exactly what I like to see. Companies that aren't just smooth sailing doing nothing, but companies that are really trying to press their advantages and they're even going after competitors that are as big as themselves. Microsoft and Google are two of the biggest companies in the market and they're making them both make mistakes and react and try to do different things. This is capitalism. It's an amazing, amazing thing to see. This battle continues and now we have Google putting pressure back on Microsoft, putting all of this pressure with their AI integration into workspace. Well, it was interesting the timing that Google did this. When they released this demo, it was one day before Microsoft's demo of their AI integration into their Office products. Imagine that. Google realized that Microsoft had this demo scheduled and Google said that we're gonna front run it. We're gonna release our demo one day before to try to take all of the buzz away from Microsoft. This is strategic and intentional. They didn't just happen chance plan this one day in advance, that was intentional. And something again, I like to see from Google. Now, Microsoft, of course, did have their AI day. They did have their big long presentation with how they're integrating AI into all of their other products, not just chat GPT into Bing, but now into everything. Here's just a portion of it. Now you can be more creative in Word, more analytical in Excel more expressive in PowerPoint. What they're calling it is Copilot, which I think is just an awesome name because you, you think of doing office work and you think of doing all these tasks that are redundant, repetitive, things that you don't like doing. And Microsoft is basically advertising this as a Copilot to just automate all the parts that you don't wanna have to focus on, all the very redundant tasks that you do on a daily basis. I have to say Microsoft has been increasing the quality of their presentations. They're starting to feel a little bit closer up to Apple's quality. Not quite there, but they're, they're getting good with their demos. They look very polished. Now, of course, that's a pre-recorded demo. Maybe it won't work quite that well, but based off of what I've seen and what I've used with ChatGPT and the power behind that, I think with a little fine tuning, which Microsoft definitely will do, I think this could happen. I think that these type of prompts and this type of analysis and this type of thing could happen with Copilot. So this is overall where we are right now between the AI battle of Microsoft and Google. Now there's other players that are trying to compete in AI as well, but in my opinion, they're not even close to these two companies. These ones are number one and number two, and they're very close neck and neck. If I had to do a future prediction and some speculation on who's going to win this battle ultimately, I think phrasing it and framing it between winner and loser is the wrong way to think about this. I think this is one of the situations where ultimately Microsoft is going to win and Google's gonna win at the same time. Because think about this for a minute. Microsoft may take some search market share from Google. And in that sense, they would win in that competition. They took a little bit of search market share. Google loses a little bit of search market share. Google loses there. But if the search market continues to grow and expand over time, 
Google still profits off of owning the huge majority of the search market that's growing. And in my opinion, I think the search market overall is going to continue to grow. There's gonna be multiple winners, including Google being the top one as they have been. In terms of Office products, Microsoft has much more to lose to Google in that situation. If Google takes incremental market share in their workspace or Microsoft's Office suite, then Google has more to gain and they've won in that battle. So both of these companies can take a little bit of market share from various parts, but overall, both of these markets between office space and search are growing and they're growing at a pretty decent pace. Both of these companies have a monopolistic grasp on these categories. Both of them have technology that other companies have a very difficult time replicating. That's a moat. There's a lot of companies that wish they could have this AI power. Google and Microsoft has it. They're integrating it into all of their products. Search, Workspace, Office, Bing, everything. It's part of all of their products. Other companies do not have the technology. They don't have the knowledge base. They don't have the hosting. Microsoft and Google are uniquely prepared with Google Cloud and Microsoft Azure to have the immense processing power to handle all of this AI. So not only are these two companies well positioned in categories that are gonna grow in the future, but they also have unique technology that's very difficult to replicate within these categories, giving them an incremental further advantage. By battling this out and butting heads in this competition, by making Google dance with ChatGPT, I think that they've made both of their companies stronger in the process. I think they've widened the moat between Microsoft and Google and every other company. Every other company's now in a more distant second, third, and fourth place in these categories. So looking over this week, even though we've had a lot of other news and a lot of other chaos, I wanted to highlight this storyline going on, and I think an immense, incredible leap in advanced technology in a short amount of time. It's not often that we see news of big companies overhauling their entire product suite to integrate enormously powerful AI tools. This is not something that happens that often. In terms of my investments, I have investments in both of these companies. I am bullish on both of them. I think that Microsoft is undervalued based on its long-term potential, and more importantly, its heavily insulated position across all of its various products. Microsoft, though, trades at a higher market multiple. It's at a 27 forward PE ratio. Right now, the market's at like a 17. So having, yeah, having a 27, it's just a bit more pricey. I'm not actively buying Microsoft right now because I think the market has come down enough that there's other companies that are simply a better deal. I've just been buying other companies a little bit more. If we compare this to Google, Google's a company that right now, I just, I've had the same feeling that I've had for the past couple of months during the sell-off. I think Google is cheap. I think the stock is cheap. It's at a 17.8 Ford PE ratio. Google trades in line with the broader market as if it had the same risk factors and profitability and future outlook as the average company in the S&P 500. In my opinion, Google is far above average. I don't think the core business model is really that threatened. And I think that they have a lot of growth in different avenues. Right now, I think a major growth path is in Google Cloud. This AI office space is just another form of growth. When I look at the metrics of Google, they do have some problems. They have a similar problem that a lot of big tech companies have had with very excessive pay compensation, but that can change. This is something solvable. We've seen how Meta has been solving that problem. They've been doing a lot of layoffs. This type of expense can change over time. Google could slow down their hiring and make it so that their free cash flow outpaces the growth in their stock-based comp. And right now, trading at a 4.5% free cash flow yield, a 17.8 price to earnings, I just think the company's cheap. I've been buying the stock. I'm personally invested in it. I also have a major investment in Microsoft as well. So I'm bullish on both of these, but I thought it would be good to highlight these companies again because they've made such big moves over the past week. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you wanna try out this software, by the way, it's called qualtrim.com. It's included as part of the Patreon. Risk-free, you can try it out for $10 a month with a free trial. There's a link in the description below. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one.